Can you believe last podcast on the left is going back on tour? The road leads to here. JK Ultra is coming to these North American cities. We got Denver, May 16th, Seattle, June 8th, Washington, D.C., July 13th, Chicago, Illinois, September 14th. October 16th, we got Boston, Massachusetts, November 2nd, right here in Los Angeles, California. And then on December 7th, we're going home to Brooklyn for a show at the King's Theater. Yeah, Brooklyn, baby. It's time for you to laugh again and open your fucking eyes. Yeah, at the same time. There's no place to escape to. This is the last podcast. On the left. <laughs> Side stories? That's when the cannibalism started. Side stories. Yes. Hmm. Ah, coffee. I don't care the doctor keeps telling me to stop having it. <laughs> I don't care. My coffee's from five days ago. Whoa. I'm just, I put it in the fridge. You, I made you buy it for me and then I didn't drink it. You gotta be careful. And then I put it in the fridge and I, I, I let it go and now it's today and I'm drinking it and I like it. It tastes fine. Mold grows. It's cold brew. It's brew cold, stay cold. I think I'm okay. Have you seen now they can do it with sound waves? Cold brew? They're doing this whole thing with sound brew. That with it's Get like it's colder. called sound brew. Get cold. Colder. Get colder coffee. Be Calm down. Coffee yet. Calm down. Get coffee yet. Yeah, I I've been trying to do it. <laughs> I went into the local coffee shop that we know. I yelled at the coffee for a while. <laughs> Honestly, it got colder, and everyone there. They yes, they asked me to leave, but at the same time they applauded. Afterwards, they were like, "What an incredible show! Are you someone I should know?" And I was like, "If you were gonna know, you would have already. You missed the boat, my friend. Yeah, I'll see you in the bathroom." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I believed myself in front of all of them. That's what I've been saying recently as well. Believe? I gave them a believe. Yeah, you better believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Side Stories. What a great way to start. My name is Henry Zabrowski. I'm sitting here. Back again with Ed Larson. That's right. I'm back, baby. I'm back. Thank you, Marcus, for uh, filling in for me for a week. He loves it. He does love it. He loves it. He loves it. He break. literally told me he loved it. He, he did. Was like, he was excited about it. Of course. But you, uh, it was going to be sad news. I started some conspiracy theories accidentally. That's by cool. Not wanting to talk about the fact that Rambo was very sick. Yeah, he was on death door. That is Ra- that is Eddie's dog. Multiple for those people don't have like sent me Reddit threads about how I'm in prison. Yeah, <laughs> and honestly, it would be great for the show. Yeah, yeah but we yeah, actually yeah, yeah. had a very well behaved trip to New Orleans, except for Marcus's paranormal experience. Yeah. Now you skipped the paranormal trip. Yeah, I went to the concert. You put me in the middle of. New Orleans during Jazz Fest. Yes. And you're like, we're going to go talk to ghosts. And I'm like, it's jazz. This is, you see, it's jazz. It's the best jazz in the world. I understand. And I'm like, these guys are dead. They had their chance. Well, they- Kermit Ruffins is here and alive. Hey, buddy, it's reboot season. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> we're bringing the ghosts back. It's called In the Life IP. Now, if there was a trumpet playing ghost, oh, sure. I'm in. Yeah, I mean, that would be very lucrative for yeah, French Quarter Phantoms. It'd be very, yeah, be very, <laughs> very haunted mansion. I would say for the upcoming series, we'll talk about it this week, but we're working on a, another long form series, which I think is going to be really f- interesting and also fucked up. But the concept of, you know, of course you're going to make money if there's go- if ghosts are real. Mm-hmm. That's going to be an extremely lucrative business. You know what I mean? Yeah, but who owns the ghosts? G- the ghosts, but the ghosts don't know how to monetize it. But that's the thing. So are the ghosts on these ghost tours, slaves. Whoa. Holy shit. Interns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how you flip it. You flip it. All right. We have a couple of updates. Yeah. Uh, number Rambo's one, alive, by the way. Rambo's, Rambo's alive. alive. Barely, barely. But he's barely. alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. So Eddie Wish was here. Wish me luck here. Eddie had asked me for a recommendation for a dog executioner, and I offered myself. I said, I can come over there. He won't even know. Yeah, I'll garrot like, him in his sleep. Yeah, I was like, well, I don't want bite marks on him. And you're like, ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I want to do it. <laughs> ooh. I want to suck your dog blood. <laughs> That's how I get through it. Uh, but uh, I'm glad you're here, and he's okay for now. Yeah. And we, But we do have some updates. We went to the week. Museum of Death, and I saw the Kevorkian, uh, you know, the chamber, and it got me uh, it hit hard. 
Oh, I about to say, I thought you, I thought you were saying you it got you hard. No, 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 it didn't get me hard. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were just. I like, was hard before oh, I even walked Jack, in. I yeah, got, yeah, 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 I had done been hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm glad we're t- we're bringing you more into the true crime well realm. You're learning. You understand that instead of having fun on vacation, mm-hmm. you're supposed to go see bad things. It's so funny. I show up to the Museum of Death, Henry's birthday, and I literally walk in to get us tickets. You know, because it's his birthday, he can't buy for tickets. Yes. And I go in there. I'm like, I got Henry Zabrowski out there. I'm like, who? Exactly. <laughs> I was like, you know, maybe it'd be kind of cool. Your last podcast on the left, like, oh, that, yeah, I think I, I think I heard of that. Hey, you man, know? that's what I take. <laughs> my, my favorite is the, what do I know you from? And then you have to sit and list your various credits as they just go, no, not that, no. Uh, not that. Isn't no. it always Wolf of Wall Street? No. I mean, no, it's crashing sometimes. Okay. Hey, crashing and then last podcast. But yeah, but then, you know, then it always turns into just been like, you're the guy that tried to fuck my wife. Or you like say something. I mean, yeah, like, that's yeah. not no, me, no, buddy. No, that's, no that's not the credit. Um, all right. To updates. In a sad move that shows the weakness of the corporate state, Panera Bread has blinked. They're removing the charged lemonade because it has caused it has led to several deaths. But that is on out. That's on us. Yeah. This is this is what happens, guys. If we don't react in the proper way, if we don't drink, so it's caffeine these, lemonade. It's extremely caffeinated lemonade. There was a lot of discrepancy about how it was advertised, how, how it many was put out. Red Bull killed the Monster Energy drink. Panera Bread. That's what I'm saying. Is they're weak. They backpedal. I never like Panera Bread. I'm not a Panera ble- I, Bread I, person I, this either. Is, this is not. They're not for me. No, I know. But also at the same time, they do make sandwiches to order. So that's that does technically put them above some of the other, and they have above murdered gas stations. The fact that they have murdered as well by a drink, also in my realm, put them up a rung oh, in the fast they've food world. Killed people before all this bread and the diabetics they that go in there to the side. You know how many it's people a, choke on soup? They they wish it they were killing more. Oh, yeah. They wish they were killing more, but this is a. They, but they can't do it directly, and they've been so mad about it for so long. They've been doing it indirectly, slyly for so long, and this makes them so upset because all they wanted to do was murder. Now they got a chance to do it. They did it with the charged lemonade, but Panera Bread saw that it was too powerful Man, for us to handle, and been, that's why we can't have nice things. It should have been eighteen and older for the lemonade. That's that how you made, lean that, in. That would have made them. They would have gotten so much more money that 21 way. Twenty-one and older. Twenty-one and up. You, you bump want it the up. Fucking lemonade? You go, it's dangerous. It's charged, baby. <laughs> I don't think you can handle the lemonade. That's right. You don't want this. That's how you market it. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's how you lean back in, being like, oh, I don't even think we should sell this. Well, we should probably stop selling this. Yeah, you know, like, two exactly. more lemonades. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. That's where Panera Bread got their asses handed to them by the American public. They should fucking sell it to Chipotle. Go, oh, they'll take it. They're all in bed together. They're all owned by McDonald's. Oh, it's the same company. Yeah, I'm yeah, certain, yeah. They should just move it over to the Chipotle. People are already shitting and pissing and puking and fucking. Chipotle, unfortunately, is the it is the thinking man slop. Yeah, and it is branded itself Mexican food by McDonald's. Yes, and it and they act. They're like, oh, it's free range, and it's just like because they make it all like whatever. But it is just diarrhea you fuel. You can't tell me no one's kicking those chickens. They need charged lemonade. Yeah, they need. They could Chipotle, really use we're it. looking at you. Charge your lemonade. You know what you need? Turbo horchata. <laughs> Charge the horchata. <laughs> Why not? Put taurine in it. Turbo horchata sounds fucking brutal. Yeah, can you oh, imagine? You know, oh, <laughs> shit and pure beans. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Um, so uh, in a moment of corporate weakness, uh, people are always saying about how we're in a corporatocracy, but this shows how these pussies will jump anytime we fucking get together and tell them to jump. So that's what we got to do. Who are we in bed with now? I, I don't know yet. I'm okay. going to find out who brings out the next drink that kills people. Yeah, I'm ready for that. That's what I want. I want to be with those guys. Acid bills. I want to be with them. Because, yeah. <laughs> again, it's, it's a type of carelessness that I love oh, and I yeah. crave. Um, and then another big update. So we covered this when this came out Okay. very briefly. The Las Vegas alien story. Now, oh, this happened yeah. last this year. Is, I like this one. No, there's obviously it was debunked all hell. But People didn't cop, like it. But the fucking, the, we see the spaceship in the cop video. Well, this is where it takes an interesting turn. Because we've had a lot of very public UFO kind of like, I don't know if it's hoaxes, 
But things going in and out. Like right now, we had the one big wave was with David Grush, the whistleblower. And he was all over the news and he was talking to the U.S. government. And now he's things, wrong because he's still alive. But things like Arrow and all these various places that are looking to talk to him, like all the Arrow, all the other like weird things that are not atip, but like there, but he's just not showing up. So oh. we're getting into a place where is David Grush out of story? Is he trying to do uh, getting into the production world like Tom DeLonge did, where they just started making television shows? I don't know. But that like that kind of rose fizzled out. The Peruvian alien mummies rose up. A lot mm -hmm. of people still been talking about they are uh, kind of a, the 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 jury is out on yeah. whether or not they are real or not. They are obviously they might not be aliens, but there's some people thinking that there's some form of baby mummy mm -hmm. that they were made back in the day and that they they because it had its bones in them. Okay. I don't know. It could be like an owl pellet, but for babies. Yeah, but it's a mummy. It's a mummy, but it could be constructed. And we so we don't know. That's kind of that's a weird, hazy place. We don't know what's what's a hoax and what's not. And this is another one of those stories that came out at the same exact time last summer. Yeah. Where this a Las Vegas family, now they reported that a UFO crashed in their backyard or close to their backyard, and they saw two, we are now saying two entities behind a tractor from where they were living. They were living in this yeah. kind of like and so they had and they a were piece like of 10 farm feet equipment. Tall. Yes. And so we know that the son uh, of the family went to YouTube. This was on April 30th of 2023. So almost a full, like, we're almost at a year. Yeah. Um, and the son had made a whole video explaining the things that he saw. He actually then redid it recently due to this new news. So one of the things that made this story so compelling was that there was a piece of dash cam footage, body cam footage from a police officer, mm -hmm. where you saw a light, a blue light, streak across the sky and land somewhere in the neighborhood. That looked cool. It does look cool. And it looked real as fuck. Yes. And there was also video from the family that saw these entities in their backyard, mm -hmm. where you see them panicking, discussing amongst each other, what the hell are we looking at? You can kind of hear the t worried tone in their eye. And then there's a video where you kind of see it over one of the family members' shoulders where you see something that is not unlike a fart in a night vision camera. Yeah. It was like it was a blurry shadow-like creature that they're saying is absolute proof that the aliens were in this backyard. Now, I don't know, but the thing that makes now the story, the update that has come in is that uh, they have went, uh, I guess, experts in video editing have went and looked at the body cam footage. They've went and looked at the footage that was sent in by the Las Vegas family that saw the fucking aliens and they completely believe it was not doctored. So whatever it is what they got was real, but we just don't know whether the story as a whole is real. So now that family has so had like to- the footage could be fake, but it wasn't digitally altered. It wasn't digitally altered. There could be a guy in a suit or something like sure. that. But if it, you can still see something in that video, because I tell you, I don't see jack shit. Yeah. I've looked and looked and looked and looked. I've done it the stoned. Blue, I've done it sober. Light. Yeah. That one, that's the one that gets me. Well, this was the one that really made a lot of people, like, they thought it was interesting because you saw these cops. Like these, scared ass cops. They, they were spooked. They yeah. went to, they, were, they didn't know what the hell was going on. They went to go look at it. They didn't want to be involved. Mm -hmm. Specifically, you hear it in their worry. When you hear you hear it in their voice, when they're talking to the family. That's why like, I believed it. A little bit. Yeah, at least they're like, well, something's going on. And now you're having experts weigh in and say, well, the footage wasn't faked. So whatever happened is extremely mysterious. The sun came back out and did another uh, UFO like little breakdown like he talked a little more about his story his story has not changed isn't there something weird about him like didn't he like try to be well, uh, he, he went straight to YouTube so there are a lot of people that that want to say well he tried to capitalize on this story immediately but isn't that what you're supposed to do if you get footage of an alien don't you go straight to YouTube it's the internet Eddie you're, they are angry no matter what the fuck it is that you do if you caught alien footage with your cell phone I would what, spray what, it everywhere everywhere I right? would show it to everyone you would I all mean, call me Every, of course last podcast guess with the exclusive and then guess exclusive and guess what else would I get I would get torn to pieces I'd be called either a CIA op 
or I'd be called a moron or that's gullible. Or yeah, of course, every day about yeah, everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. about every so single it doesn't topic. Even matter. No, it doesn't. So that's your a, life wouldn't change. No, it, it would get worse. <laughs> it would objectively get worse. I would show alien footage, and then it would be destroyed from every angle, and then I would be destroyed from every angle, and then you get pulled into the UFO world, and all of a sudden I'm gonna have to hang out with Dr. Stephen Greer and act like he's like my buddy, and I'm gonna have to all of a sudden I'm at a MAGA rally. Like that's like what happens. I'll still hang out with you when you're crazy. No, I mean. But I don't want to go and fun crazy. Yeah. Just bump me back into, I don't want to be conservative crazy. You know, I just want to be. I don't think you can be. Eccentric. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't care about politics. Yeah, that's So it doesn't get it all the way in there. Yeah. So in the end, I'll never be that type of crazy. But my goal is to dress in one color for about 25 years Mm -hmm. and be almost unable to speak to. Man, you really need to just get the David Icke jumpsuit. Whatever. I, I have been pricing. You've been pricing it? Yeah, I've been looking at them. Okay, uh, good. But this video is, everybody wanted to come out and debunk this because it does seem really outlandish. And it does seem like maybe this kid's trying to get attention. But I will say the video is that he, when he expresses himself and he's talking about the story, like when he says like what I saw, it it's pretty compelling because he does have a lot of emotion behind his voice he does seem really scared um the eyewitness drawing of the alien is very silly yeah looks a bit like Shelley Duvall <laughs> and uh it's not very good but again it's not re- it's not done by an expert yeah it's done by a child or a teenager the um now what intrigues me about it is the fact that it's Vegas. Now I'm coming from an idiot's point of view. Everyone knows that. No, I Eddie. Uh, no, the, the uh, but see the thing is, if aliens are coming here, uh-huh. why would I mean Vegas seems like a good spot to go? Yeah. A, a beacon of light in the middle of a dark desert darkness. Well, I kind of like the idea right? that, in my mind, the phenomenon is half psychic in reality. Like if we are dealing with these things, oftentimes. I think that they are doing it through like a window. Like we are being looked at like the way people inside the CVS look at you for your prescription. Yeah. Where they're sort of looking either through a thing to see us or they're kind of kind of dip in and out. Abduction scenarios happen in a semi-permeable, semi-reality way, somewhere between dimensions. I don't know. I feel like abductions are a thing of the past. No, they're all over the place. That's 80s shit. Buddy, we're about to go to Contact in the Desert. You're about to meet. You're about to get abducted yourself by an abductee. I'm very excited. It is going to happen. But uh, this story, Vegas, it falling down, crashing. I kind of like the concept, which is, you know, super dumb. Like it has, there is no evidence for it. But these are the bad aliens. Yeah. The, the, the ones that crash are bad at it. Yeah, they're going to find it. They want it. They're drunk. They want to go to Vegas and party. They're bad aliens. Yeah, they yeah, are yeah. literally bad pilots. They're fuck, they're fuck ups. Yeah, the UFO they're, would just end up in the lobby of resort world. They're just angry. <laughs> I think if UFOs if, and these various, if it is a nuts and bolts phenomena and these various alien races have gone to such extents to make sure we don't know that they're real, they're always half get, like in and out. The fact that every once in a while one just crashes, to me just points to the fact that, well, they can't all be Michaels, sometimes they're afraid of. Maybe the alien mummies are trying to go to the Luxor and they're like, why does this now pyramid have a light on the top of it? Now we're it's in not non- like the other pyramids. We're in a non-serious place. <laughs> This is a non-serious point of discussion because there is a, the, again, they're interdimensional. They don't need lights. They don't need neon. They don't need sex workers. They're interdimensional. Like, I mean, but I'd rather them, you know, pay for it than take it. All I know is if they are partying in Vegas, I want to be with them because no one was having more fun in Vegas than a series of aliens besides the group of pilots that took down the towers in 9-11. Yeah, because that weekend before 9-11 must have been so fun with them. Man, I'll tell you what, man. If Fish was paying the sphere that weekend, the world would be a different Fuck place. It, dude. Maybe they fucking <laughs> would have been too busy jamming, dude. Like, I don't think we should do it, man. Dude, planes are scary, think man. About it. it was fucking scary getting here, man. Fucking farmhouse is good, man. Unfortunately, I believe that it was our actions that led to 9 11. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like Eddie's laughing about that? <laughs> Bit of truth I put in there. Bit of a fib I say where I don't care about politics. Maybe I know everything. Oh. Maybe I know everything. 
You do read Ask the news. Ask me a political question. All do right. I read the news? Uh, who is the Attorney General of the United States? <laughs> I have to Google it myself. Is it Paula Dean? I don't think it's Paula Dean anymore. I think she, they kicked her out after. Is that she, Jack Smith? Jack Smith. <laughs> well, it's Merrick Garland. Merrick Garland. We knew that one. We I knew that one. No, I don't know. I've him. heard his name. He looks like a pussy. Oh my God! You're gonna get us killed. <laughs> what is he gonna do? Yeah. Uh, what is he gonna do? He's fucking destroy us. Oh, am I gonna get? Oh, am I gonna get audited again? <laughs> oh well, try to find any fucking leaks in this shit, man. You try to find a fucking leak in it. I'm. You Look know, at this fucking. You guy. don't need to. I want to knock his glasses off. I mean, I think you're a good man, Mr. Garland. I knock his glasses off. Fuck you. What do you do, man? You gonna fight me, dude? Appreciate all the work you do, bro. I don't know what you do. You know, locks people up. And yeah, shit. well, fucking hate that. Yeah, well, you know, some of them don't fucking it. arrest me, dude. Yeah, well, fucking keep antagonizing him. I'm He's not antagonizing him. I don't know him. Yeah, I don't know this man. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm, I'm just saying. saying. But uh, but you don't know him. You don't I know don't need to know man. trivia to know things. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's trivia. Mm -hmm. But I know bigger, better things than that. Yeah. I know more important political ideas than that. Yeah, it's not about names and places and dates. That's not what politics is. Politics is being amongst the people and knowing the people, like how Panera Bread should does get not kept, know the people does not know the fucking people. Yeah, I know the people. I'm sure Merrick Garland could suck down a fucking charged lemonade. Look I at bet him, he guy. fucking sucks five dicks each morning. I don't know, not with those tiny lips. Yeah, I know because yeah, whoever's dicks he's sucking ain't yeah, smiling, they're getting, getting lots of teeth. Yeah, they're am I supposed? Are we supposed to be rooting for him? Do we like him? I think we like him. I mean, he's whatever. We like him enough anyway. I, don't know, I mean, I, they all suck. Hey, you know, I mean, I, even the ones I like, I hate. Just for the record, the only oh yeah, I hate. Oh, yeah, yeah, same, yeah. same. Yeah. I think that the more if I, I like, like you, vote for this guy, like know that I don't like him. Oh, believe or me. her. You know, I'm just saying that because the other person terrifies me. Yeah, if I like a politician, I want them to do. They better act like a fucking trained dog. Yeah, <laughs> for me. All right, that's all they are. You're Certainly a little fucking Merrick Mer Garland. You're a little fucking dog, and you're supposed to do the shit you need to do. All right, look at Jana Reno. I remember her. Oh yeah, she used to get stuff done. Look at that. Look, that's look at a that. fucking thick ass fucking that woman. Neck man, that Ooh. fucking neck can get anything done. You can fucking punch her in the face, and she'll still go to court. She'll laugh her ass off. Yeah, you punch like her in the she'll face. She'll be like, Oh yeah, you want to yeah. do it again? I like the taste of my own blood. I don't know, yeah. dude. I don't know who these people are. She fucking eats herself out. Whenever she was on her period, I heard she was so tall. It's crazy. I heard that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I heard she would, know, diva, her own she would get a diva cup and then she would take little yeah, shooters she all day long. Her own pussy yeah. Blood. yeah, I heard that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. fucking heard that crazy. Dude. Yeah, man. Fucking, she was, yeah. Meanwhile, Bill Clinton's there smoking fucking a cigar the opposite way. Yeah. <laughs> Fall asleep in the job drinking your pussy blood, Jan Reno. Yeah, she had to change her last name to Reno from Las Vegas when she started drinking her own pussy blood. Guys, we're just, a, this is a thought experiment. <laughs> All right, this is not a political podcast. Uh, I, again, if you want to know about the many varied crimes of Chad Daybell, Lori Vallow, I will explain that to you for hours. I know Zulema. I know Ian, the sons. I know that. I know the kid. I know all the whole crew of. Like, I could really t give you a long breakdown of anything, but I guess things that matter. Yeah. Well. I guess it's, that's as important as it was. And I feel like uh, that's the end of our updates. Good work. Live from your grave. I was going to do the talk about the eunuch maker, Marius Gustafson. He just got sentenced to 22 years in prison. Not enough for his eunuch maker moniker and his, like, streaming service, which yeah. is interesting. He had pay-per-view a penis-cutting-off channel. They would, yep. So what they would do is... Uh, very similar to, which is now very controversial, the Red Room books by Ed Pisker, where they would talk about the, the, the YouTube channel, essentially, for snuff films. He had 21,000 subscribers between 2021 and 2023. I did not know that yeah. he had that, that this is so many 21, people. 21,000 is a lot. 21,000 is quite a bit. just watch penises get cut off? He made somewhere, but he said something, they believe that he made something like $385,000 on what or technically consensual penis mutilation videos. This happy, jolly Santa-looking man... I was going to say, he looks nice. No, oh, well, he had his own dick cut off and he ate it. And he his also... His own dick cut Oh, he yeah. He ate his own dick? Oh, yeah, buddy. I didn't know that about him. No, he's fucking... He's, well, that's why he got so big. He was a eunuch. Those guys get huge. That's what the dolphins need. 
We can start cutting the dicks off of these linemen. <laughs> Is that real? I don't think eunuchs are any bigger. Side stories, LPOTL at gmail.com. I'm pretty sure Do you gain get, weight when you lose your dick? I think you get real big. I don't know. I don't think so because I feel like there's, it's not just so. Well, you got to lift weights. What else are you going to do? You can't jerk off. I don't know. Idle but, hands, bro. But this guy, he he did, he froze one of his own body parts yes, off. Yes, castrated males uh, or eunuchs tend to gain fat wow. and lose muscle. That's really fascinating. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, eunuchs are big. That's why they were like bodyguards back in the day. What? <laughs> Is that true? Eunuchs were bodyguards? Can I even say eunuch anymore? I, I For feel like, like another week and a half, <laughs> we could say eunuch. I, <laughs> but these guys, oh, wow, I didn't know. Eunuchs were often employed as bodyguards in the Middle East and China. They were considered to be trustworthy and strong. Haven't you seen History of the World? Yeah, but I always thought that it was like a joke. No, it all has some kind of based in fact. That's fascinating. That's what makes it funny is that there's a little bit of truth in there. Wow. Yeah. I learn every day in this job. <laughs> I learn every day. Well, this guy, uh, he had many people volunteer to have their dick and balls cut off. They had hands frozen off and smashed like he did with Unit 731. That's one of the- How much many, would he pay them? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Did they split it with them? Like There's the not a lot of details. I wish I, I do want to know the ad split. Like, oh, I, we only got a hundred views on your dick getting cut off. I do off, think so that there's, there's like, probably yeah. a, we're going to have to have a little bit of like, listen, we I, love your words here. weren't good today. I, we honestly, we love what you do here and we want to like sponsor you. And like, believe me, we all loved when you ate the cum from the recently cut off dick and balls yeah. from that priest who then committed suicide. Like, we loved that year. It was great. And we honestly, and we all loved it. Deb loved it. Brian loved it. I just are, I'm just thinking that. The which, public wasn't into we, it. We, we wanted, <laughs> we want to catch the wave. Do you have something that's more in an Andrew Schultz? Like, I'm looking yeah. for something more in a sort of a young teen boy demographic. Can we do, what, what kind of penises do young teen boys want to get? The watch get cut off. Yeah, can we glue another penis to you and chop off that penis? Does the skibbity toilet have a penis that they want to be cut <laughs> off uh, live? Because I don't know. Do they have exclusives? Does skibbity toilet have an exclusive with YouTube, or can we? Can we do we get that? Does Unic Maker get that? Unic Maker was he on? He wasn't on YouTube though. No, unfortunately, no. He had his own service, which yeah. is kind of impressive. Honestly, I kind of want to. I take him as a really good example. Yeah, of the independent content maker yeah it's because that's like, a success story in it many really ways. is you're getting money per view unlike youtube you ain't getting shit and he knows his audience yeah. he knows what they want and he just dials it right get a in. hold of that mailing list you those are that's those are fans no i if don't they're, mm. you if they're watching penises get cut off they like this show I actually feel like these days it's more so i feel like that's a two bears thing now do you think that um now here's a good question about people who watch penises get cut off uh, conservative or liberal? Conservative. You think so? I think liberals, more often than not, are allowed to do the things that they think. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That that more it depends on because now liberal is a bad word because it's not liberal. It's whatever it is, right? The concept of you you're on the like I feel like you're a little bit more groovy. You you probably won't be as mad about like you know things going down with your penis that you didn't maybe fully expect would en engage mm -hmm. your penis but they do are engaging your penis and you're willing a little bit more to sort of like do that and be like fine with it or like these guys they, you know a lot of times they'll create whole laws to try to go after the the one like pervy thing that they are specifically into yeah because I think in the actual research of getting these laws they get to like legally, go do a bunch of that perverted stuff like on the side and then come back and be like, that's oh, bad. Nobody yeah. should have their asshole eaten out by a train conductor anymore. Yeah, we would, I think we talked about this once before on the show, but the people who watch the most child pornography have to be cops. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's whoever's. Yeah. And then uh, the content controllers at Facebook, YouTube, yeah. Gmail, like Google, but like they, even that gets sent to the cops. But it, uh, yeah, oh yeah, there is a. Do you know that there's like a pantheon? I wanted to write this. That's what the season two. I'll let you guys know the spoiler of this. The season two of Trollville uh -huh. was a uh, concept we had where my character would be one of the human eyeballs because they do need human eyeballs mm -hmm. on the extreme content that comes in. So they've been trying to outsource it all to AI bots like and, and bots that will catch child porn, catch like people doing uh very like, you know, torture videos and snuff films. And but you still need a 
person there. What about all these eunuchs? Have them do it. But why should they be sad? Just because they don't have a penis anymore? I mean, who knows? They're I don't think they'd be yeah. sad. They're I already don't th- something fucked up with them. I mean, think if you don't, if you've all we voluntarily don't have to worry about them jerking off to it. Well, it's it depend. Well, I don't think that they are, but I feel like it's still hard on their brains. I think that if you are voluntarily cutting your penis off and you're not in a transition position, you're literally gonna. You're not like a super chill dude. You're not in a transition position. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning and growing. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. I've lost the point of this conversation. You know, but it felt <laughs> good to really talk it out. You know, uh, I think it's good that we got the update section to a half an hour today. <laughs> I don't know how we did that. We didn't get to any new stories. These yet. are roundtable rules, man. We see how far we can go before we actually get to <laughs> stories. But you need new stories to have updates later on. They're all side stories, so they can be new ones or old ones as far as I'm concerned. But this is side stories, so on side stories, there are main stories. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's what get happened? to some new I, stories. Wait, what's, what's first on your docket? Let here? me see what I got here. All right. We have, this is, honestly, this came in very last minute. It was right before I started recording, and it actually is like, it's fucked. The story of a person that hit, okay. Tell me about this. You loosely started talking about this before we walked in here. This is a hit and run tale. <laughs> Do you like that? Do you like a hit and run tale? A tale of hit and run. Uh, this, it, it is fucked up. So a person by the name of Karen Fisher, 20 years old, this comes out of Houston, uh, on May 3rd, Steven Anderson was walking on a Texas street to pick up mail. And the car ran him over. Now, there is full-on video of this hit and run. Was it intentional? Watch this video. So, the person is Karen Fisher. That's a suspect. Now, if we look right here, we're going to see. And this video is caught on video. And it's truly fucked up. It's not just a hit and run. So, Steven Anderson, as you'll see. So, if we play this video a little bit. He was, like, just hanging out. Only on 13, deeply disturbing and shocking video of a murder in broad daylight. Comes this older guy. On May 3rd, the victim, Stephen Anderson, is walking on Woodridge Square Just Drive to pick up mill, his mail, human. sources tell yeah, us. Right. He turns around at the sound of a screeching car speeding right into him. The car. Oh, We're yeah. No. Literally, right it went at it. Aims for him. The car knocks him again, over. Pushing him further into the street. Neighbors are on oh, the then phone she backed over him. calling 911. All right, so now you see the car hit him. She then backed over him, right? Oh, yeah. Pushed him in the middle of the street. She's now just wandering around. So she got out of her oh, car. Oh, man. She started wandering around. She's com- fucked up, Confronting too. people. But then in the video, you see her. She has stabbed the corpse multiple times. Where she go- And then she straddles him. After he's dead, after someone came out from inside of their homes and put a blanket on top of his dead body and then begins to make out with his corpse. Then she gets up, tries to break into this car. This car won't let her, won't let her in. She seems to be disoriented. No. Uh, I know. I don't want to go too far and say I feel like her judgment might have been impaired. And that is when she leapt over the corpse and ran away. So no she ran away. No shoes on No shoes on. Running down the, the street. Corpse. Very dangerous to drive with no shoes on. It is. And because, I mean, maybe at first you could say maybe the flip flop fell off, got stuck underneath the accelerator, fucking killed the guy, right? That's what I would do. That's mm-hmm. what I'd say if, if I did this. Yeah. Um, and then I'd say, oh, I had too much acid indigestion. That caused me to stab the corpse. Make out with it, and then we'll flee. Well, the you're scene trying to crime. bring it back to life. I'm just been the CPR. I'm upset. That's what I would say. You would. I was beside myself, officer. Now, was the guy already dead when uh, they stabbed him? Well, he wasn't doing good, and so they got they rolled over him twice. He was still probably in a form of a life. She then ended his life by stabbing a bunch and then kissing him. But it's all just all done on camera. Jesus. Middle of the day. It is. This is an afternoon, and she definitely. Aimed for him. She went to kill him. Uh, it's also really strange. I mean, just strolling up to him with the knife like that. Like, they were it all... was just like, it was like, it was like, oh, I know this motherfucker. But like, it was very interesting because they did not have very much of a criminal record. The records show that Karen Fisher was on community supervision for five years for evading arrest in 2023. And then that I hate day, that charge, by the way. What do you mean? If that's the only charge, evading arrest. What was the arrest for? Basically, what that normally means from the amount of dash cam footage I've watched mm-hmm. is that 
normally it means that you have been stopped for something that is either speeding or not turning, not doing a turn signal, like a light, yeah. like some form of infraction. And then you have blown up the situation to where they're trumping up the charges on you or they just don't like you. Yeah. Like truly, they, they don't want arrest you. is an opinion crime. It is, and they are a. You would have to show like a lot of times now they have the body cam footage to show it, and a lot of times they just do that to kind of bump up your bail because yeah. you have pissed off a police officer. Yeah, uh, because you've done something. This person doesn't. Let's just say I'm going to go on a limb and say the person that ran over this person, Karen Fisher, is a handful. Yeah, uh, I think uh, yeah, she might be a lot to deal with uh, because that morning she I mean, was also charged. Gotta be like crack or something. Uh, I, I mean, it, she was also drugs involved. I don't know, maybe Advil. She was charged with assaulting a staff member at the hospital on the same day at the murder because they was dis- before. They were, oh yes, yes. Man, yes, imagine yes, being yes. that person. This person was really, really, and but they are being they were immediately arrested uh, and they are being held on a two million dollar bond. I don't think they have it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and say. I don't think. I don't think. I don't think. By judging by the lack of footwear, I'm gonna think they don't have it. No, I think they they may not have it. I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, But that was a very scary video. That's kind of just why I wanted to show. That was like Grand Theft Auto SVU. It was very, very scary. And you just gotta be, gotta be careful out there. All right. Don't wear your headphones at night. Don't wear your headphones at night. I wear my headphones at night. I love it. it. You shouldn't do it. It makes you a mark. Does it? I yeah, with that, even with the earbuds. Well, you're a big guy. I'm so big. No one fucks with me. It's kind of nice. I can, sometimes, I, though, the guys that fuck with the biggest guys are like true psychopaths. Oh yeah. Well, those guys you got to watch out for. I just keep myself away from them. You can see them a mile away. Yeah, because they're they all got like clenched ah, fists and I'm walking down the you. street I'm all heavy. Sometimes you have to like take a shoulder and just deal with it. You know? Oh yeah, sure. You know, but so, you know, but that's fine. You yeah, can, I can live it through. I can live through taking a shoulder. And now we got this. This is another fucked up story. Poison expert. Accused of killing this is wild. Life. I can't believe this guy is so fucking stupid. This guy, uh, this guy, Connor Bowman, 31, is accused of using liquid, I believe it's colchicine, mm-hmm. to poison his wife, 32 year old Betty Bowman, who died on August 20th. Now, this was, he was a medical and student a, resident. And she's also a doctor, right? Oh, yes. Or an now, anesthesiologist or something. They were both on their way. She was a pharmacist. Pharmacist. Okay, that's what it was. And he was working in, uh, I guess, yeah, he was a medical resident. Mm-hmm. Now, he knew that, I guess this was a, this me- this medicine that he fed to her was called liquid colchicine, I believe it's the, is how it's pronounced. And it was for, um, I guess it's supposed to be for gout, but uh, it can be fatal in high dosages. And they thought that maybe they would look for it. But she had, had gastrointestinal distress for four days and then she died, which yeah. is a major sign that you've been poisoned. And he said no autopsy and he wanted to cremate it. Oh, of course. Yeah. Boom. Done. And that's how you know. Same thing with Chad Daybell. Immediately, yeah. everybody that died in the vicinity of Chad Daybell, he wanted that every, everybody needed to be immediately cremated because yeah. they believe, which is now I've learned from watching hours and hours of the Chad Daybell, Lori Vallow trial, that they believe that the entire police department Department of Rexburg, Idaho, had be uh, infiltrated by demon zombies. Oh, good. Yeah, it's yeah. just that easy. Uh, but this guy, he demon decided zombies aren't going to Idaho. No, that's like the last place they go. I just feel like Idaho. You know who's going to Idaho? No, everyone's leaving. Yeah. I love you, Idaho. Yeah, but everyone's leaving. How much Irish can you take? I love you, yeah. Irish. Well, it's Potato Land. Idaho potatoes. Yeah, but in Ireland, we're gonna get into a whole thing. Should we just cut this? Probably. I would cut it. Rob, cut <laughs> it. Um, or bleep a bunch of stuff. Yeah, and then bleep, people bleep, think bleep, what, yeah. I, yeah, God knows. what I said. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? Uh, 9.6 of I, Idaho's I, population. Which is not enough. <laughs> so, no, no. Slightly. Slightly bigger than that. One tenth of the people who live there. I guess so. That's just America. Uh, so, what got this guy <laughs> was the fact that he looked up whether or not. He could list himself as a widow on Bumble and then locked in a widower like the thing. Because I get it. I bet you in his mind, he's thinking, I'm going to so much pussy is going to be jumping at my face. They are going to think what, I'm Katie Lang. That's <laughs> like these guys are <laughs> these women are not going to let me go. 
<laughs> right? If they think I'm a widower. That's like it's like a person who watches too much porn, right? Yes. Guys who watch too much porn think that they're just going to get laid the moment they're like not married anymore. Guess what, buddy? Yeah. Uh, it ain't as generous out there as you think. <laughs> we have a couple of divorced friends, and it ain't pretty out there, buddy. Uh, hold on to your loved one. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to your loved one. Uh, but th- uh, this is yeah, very t- two days before he poisoned her. He looked up kind of uh, what a widower lo- looks like the the meaning of widower. Yeah, how like- he can get on, basically how we can position himself as a widower. Because then he said that he told these women that immediately connected with him. Because guess what? It worked. Yeah. Because people were like, oh my god. Like he was getting messages that were like, are you sure that you feel comfortable? flirting and dating again like you know like but also it was like six days later oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he jumped it right was on. Like, it was like really soon which well, because he, he kept telling them my wife like super tragic i was there every minute for my wife and when we helped her with an assisted death a year ago on her deathbed like these like super fake stories yeah. about how what a brave husband he was to help her through her last moments be like the internet exists the obituary is not even out yet this i do find that very interesting that these men really do there's been several of these like like chris watts and the story mm-hmm. of him and his shenan watts like chris watts like legitimately thought oh no no my 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 mistress is going to be so thrilled to find out my wife and two children died mysteriously and disappeared. She's going to be so horny for it. She can't wait. Like, yeah. like this idea that, like, you don't think that women are private investigators. Oh, they love it. I mean, I like it. I understand. Yeah. I understand. But they look up your every movement they have and not sat just that they're like going over all your movements with, with their, their friends. friends they are looking so they're getting at multiple opinions about your movements. everybody's looking at your stuff that's yeah. over dude you don't get to just restart it doesn't work like that anymore you can't just wipe out one family and build another yet yeah, does it keep happening yes does it does it do families get wiped out on a whim over the fucking just like uh, literally seeing a new pair of boobs and guess what man guess where you can see a new pair of boobs on the internet. It, they're all over the there's internet. So many, you go to a strip club. The strip you club. Get that's in girl. person. You yeah. Mean, there's so many places you can go. You could just see another pair of boobs. You don't need to kill your family. You could go. And guess what? There also is divorce. Guess what? Divorce you could, is like, seems like such a better option well, than no, murder. It's not. You know, I actually don't know. But I do think that it's it's always better than murder. It's always better than murder. Because you're not going to get away with murder. No, not it's anymore. Not Those you days never are will. over. It's over. That's done. That 83 was like the last time. Divorce ain't fun either. Yeah. But again, we've said this, we, we've we talked about this many, many times, and we'll always say it, just get in the car and leave. If you want to, if that's how be you got to do it, be a man and go. leave. Just yeah. go. Go to Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Go to Portugal. Yeah, somewhere like that. Go to a like place that. where you could meet a easily- Mummy Town. E- find an easily foolable person that wants to be with you. There's a lot of them. Mm-hmm. You can go get one. It's very, very easy. But yeah, he killed her. Uh, we, I mean, innocent until proven guilty. But I mean, he's a poison guy, and his wife died of being poisoned, and he was trying to figure out how to be a, what a widower was two days before he killed her. We're not lawyers, all right? And I'm yeah, just mad he killed her on I'm Julie's a judge. birthday. I do, yeah. I mean, he always uh, everybody's been mad. Everybody's been killed on everyone's birthday. No one's been killed on my birthday. Okay, I'm sure it's been happening. I'm, I'm gonna sure, look up right now. I'm sure it was. Yeah, October fifth. that have happened on October fifth. I want to know a good one. Yeah, this is this, this this. I want to know. Yeah, it's October fifth. No, no, city. Of Long Beach. You, yeah, I'm looking at here. I'm looking at Long, Long Beach. Here we go. Here we go. Wow, Long Beach was f- first that came up for me as well. Yep. Here we go. October fifth, nineteen ninety nine. Doctor Harold Shipman. Yep. He went on trial. That's someone he killed. Somebody he killed. Harold Shipman went on trial. Extremely yeah. boring person for somebody who killed three hundred people. Fifteen. Yeah. Extremely, extremely boring. Yeah. No, right here. Murder investigation. Eight hundred block of Atlantic Avenue. This is in Long. This is in uh, Long Beach. Mm-hmm. Uh, traffic fatalities couple of those, those are, yeah but that, traffic fatalities happen you know i'm not worried about that yeah i think that's fine i mean that's gonna happen you know unless it's the woman we saw earlier running over the guy twice and stabbing him and kissing him and shit in front of everybody see that doesn't happen all the time. yeah i you know I, shout out to the lady who put a blanket on him i mean what a nice i guess oh joseph goebbels died on your birthday <gasps> oh how nice how nice! Oh, Goebbels died on my birthday. Yeah, he committed. He killed himself on your birthday. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Oh, that's a new factoid. And his, and his children. Oh, great. He, oh, that's were, also when Adolf Hitler killed himself. All of his childrens had 
H names. Yeah. Hydrum, Hedwig, Holding, Helmet, Hildegard, and Like Helga. George Foreman. Yeah, he had all H children. That's so cute. See, this is why <laughs> these conversations lead somewhere. They really lead places, and we learn not so one, much. Not one Henry. Wow. He had six children with H names, and not one of them was Henry. Because we'd probably be Heinrich. Yeah. Henry, I just learned, um, is the ninth most popular name amongst newborns. I know. Everybody's heard, saying Henry. And it's honestly kind of driving me insane. I'm getting a little bit of a twitch from it because everywhere I go, I hear, down, Henry. Henry, don't put that in your mouth. Henry. <laughs> Henry, come here. Henry, Henry, stop that. Henry, get off the man. Well, it's, dude, it, uh, try having the name Ed, dude. Anytime anyone screams, it sounds like they're saying my name. Like, Ed! <laughs> no, 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 just that's what that. you hear. Yeah, that's what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> what a horrible trap you're in. Yeah, yeah. What are you gonna do? All you right. Know? Well, I think that we've talked enough. Bebe Flipper <laughs> died on your birthday in 1997. How, how did <laughs> Flipper die? <laughs> How did Flipper die? It doesn't really say, but uh, uh, one of the Flippers. Autoerotic asphyxiation. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be incredible. Ch jammed a cork in his blowhole God, and fucking tried to suck his own fucking, dick. Fucking finger at himself and his fucking <laughs> dolphin ass till he comes out his front. What's According this? to trainer Rick O'Berry, the dolphin that played Flipper in the 1960s TV show Flipper died by suicide in his arms. Yeah, they that talk is, about no. that in the cove, but no. that's, a, that's a different Flipper. There's a, there was a lot of Flippers. This, you gotta be fucking kidding me. After we found covered in black blisters and beer. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It doesn't commit. Ooh. Dolphins. Danny Dolphins. Aiello the third. Dolphin committed suicide on my birthday. No, it's, a different, it's a different flipper. Flipper committed it's suicide on my birthday. Flipper. I am getting that t-shirt made. Can flipper someone please? committed suicide on my birthday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Too real. Too real, buddy. Too real here, man. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I'd be careful out there. Yeah. So, yeah, Goebbels, that's a good one. That's a that good one. That really is a good one. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, th no problem. See, now you get to say that forever. <gasps> Gordon Lightfoot died on your birthday. That's the boring. Please. Is that from last year? Have some respect. I think it was last year. It was last year. Yeah, because yeah. I remember the memes. Uh, yeah, and then they were still trying to sell tickets to his concert like two weeks later. <laughs> I'm like, nope. I literally like got an show email. That would be like, incredible. They're they're like, like, go to Gordon Lightfoot. I was like, I don't think he's coming. Yeah, they're just going to play a CD and just have an old man sit next to a <laughs> stool and just like, we'll get a couple of people. They'll still think he's alive. Yeah, I remember when that boat died. No one's looked closely at Gordon Lightfoot for about 15 years. Die from your grave. Uh, we actually, there was so much stuff we didn't get to today, but it was all animal news. It was literally all animal news. So one yeah. was the, the bear dragging the victim from the wreckage. The guy that, like, they found him dragged from the car because he fucking died in a car crash and the bear ate his fucking remains, which yeah. is hilarious. The Chinese zoo dying dogs that look like pandas. I mean, again, not a, not. It's the only place where there are pandas. I don't we know. We should be dying dogs. Uh, but I actually feel like it's nicer to the pandas in a way. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to Honestly, I would love to get a chow and die it like a panda. I think that's I mean, so look cute. At that thing i know it's so that cute. that thing's adorable but, you dye wendy's hair of course no we do i, I mean, honestly i'm already getting i know i'm getting emails talking about like why blah 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 but i think with side stories lpotl at gmail.com explain to me because i think it's actually probably better for the animals if they keep a dog yeah dressed if they don't have the proper enclosures and the proper treatment plans for this endangered animal the panda i think that this is actually a responsible way for people to think they have seen a panda yeah and you've yes you've seen a dog which is much easier to take care of than a panda yeah man i'm just worried with all this tiktok shit how we're gonna make china sell part of their tiktok in america it's not gonna happen I, i'm just it's worried a year that, from now but we just got our pandas back Oh, you think they're going to take the pandas back? I think they're going to take the pandas back again. I think good luck come and try to take our pandas back. They did back. it in the first place. We sent them back. Well, guess what? They're, they were this the first time? thing on a plane during COVID where the pandas leave in San Diego. You want a fucking hot war? You come for our pandas. All they're, right? They're their pandas. We just borrow them. They're on lease? Yeah. They're China's pandas. Isn't we that shouldn't crazy? be indebted to them with our panda economy. We just, Honestly, I feel like we're already way indebted to them enough. We used to have pandas in I say uh, we give those pandas DC. back. That's leverage we don't need on us. Though. I want the pandas. But we could go see them. Yeah. I'm actually, and I've ju I just talked about this because I went to go see, we went to the LA County Fair. We went to the petting zoo, which was like cute and it was mm -hmm. fine. It wasn't as depressing as I thought it was going to be. But I'll see an animal on Zoom. I don't need to see an animal in person. 
Really? I'll see an animal. I'll see a picture of an animal, and I'm fine with it. You don't like going to the zoo? I hate the zoo. I think it's like a prison. Whoa. I hate the zoo. Well, some zoos are awful, but some zoos are wonderful. I, I, uh, and if you're born there, I mean, like, I've lived in an apartment. Is it weird I'd rather go to a human prison? Yeah. That's very weird. It'd be kind of cool. Think about this. Instead of going to the zoo, you go to a human prison, you go to death row. Okay. And you can go and you can see all of them, and then you pay money for each one of them to tell you their story. That's a true crime podcast. That's literally from the mouth of the killer. You're just producing. You're not enjoying yourself. Go ahead, go get a hobby. You're just like that's <laughs> you're, a just, produ- you're just working. You're that's just an like- incredible idea, though, right? Yeah, a death row jail tour. stories. Yeah, jail stories from the death row guys while they're in their cages. That's fun. They're so they're don't call them cages. I'm just saying okay, when they're in <laughs> when they're in the death row, right? They can all tell you their own stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fun as hell. I feel like that's way more. Like cool. I hung out in jail than with to, animals. Make, to make the jail special with Jeff. Yeah. I, I hung out. No, there. it's scary in there. That's just very frightening. And no one tells the truth. No, of course no. Everybody's it's full all, of shit. They're all lies. Yeah, yeah that's what lie. we discovered for all the years we've been covering serial killers. All these guys, they don't. They are the reason why you cannot trust a jailhouse confession is because it gets them out of the fucking jailhouse. It gets them out of the cell. It gets them yeah. to talk. It gets them a lot more privileges. So unfortunately. They are selling it under the guise of, I want to, you know, do something good for all the time I've spent inside. But a lot of times it's because there's a lot of self-interest involved, which is why you can't, you have to take jailhouse confessions with a grain of salt. Oh, for sure. And also the story about that we didn't get to the morbidly obese monkey after he uh, died. He ate himself to death. And he's the cutest guy. He fucking lived a great life. He lived the life the way he wanted to. Uh, He is a big fat guy. Mm -hmm. And he was on a diet. But hey. What are you going to do? He died at James Gandolfini death, and I hope I'm next. Man, that's like, that was one of the things that, Rodney Dangerfield died on my birthday. Wow. You're remember, still looking at who died on your birthday. No, I, 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 I was looking at yours before, now I'm looking at mine. <laughs> and I was curious. Did you see his, did you Steve see his Jobs. Grave? Wow. That's a good one. He ate papayas to death. One of my favorite jokes is uh, everybody wanted to work for Steve Jobs, except his pancreas. You hear that? <laughs> You it's not that? my joke. I just repeated it. It's yeah. not my joke. I'm throwing it out there, but I think it needs to be told as much mm. as possible. Oh, and I also got so <laughs> one little they got before the listener emails. Fat monkey. That is a fat monkey. He's cute. He died. Yeah, he ate himself to death. But he went out like he wanted. That's what I'm saying. Like James Gandolfini. Yeah, he chose this life. Yeah, was his son next to him? I don't think. He, I think his son is long out, dude. Mm. I think that 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 monkey. He's living his own life. He's not concerned about child care. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's do a little bit of listener emails. One thing I got was a response to a little bit of a skeptic bump against Marcus's experience with the paranormal, with the dowling rods or yeah. what we call these these two swinging things. There's a thing that is called um, idiometer experience or phenomena, the idiometer ex- phenomena, mm-hmm. which is the idea that you can, it's used in hypnotism and it's used in various other sort of chicanery processes where you put an idea in somebody's head and then they subconsciously reflect the idea. So the idea is that maybe that in the sales pitch of talking to the ghost, right, and this idea that we're setting a parameter, the dowling rods go wide when it's yes, yeah. they cross when it's no, you've then subconsciously told a part of your brain that this is what you're looking for and you're asking questions and then unbeknownst to you consciously, your hands will use the ideometer effect and it will do unconscious movements that will make the thing move the way you want it to, or oh, the way like you want Ouija to board. Respond. Like that's what they also say about Ouija boards. I will say I do find it interesting that the dowling rods in my hands were wiggly, and in others they weren't. So I find but it they interesting. Didn't move for you. They didn't do anything. For and me. there's no chance of a motor being in them or no, anything like no, that. No, they're just a sleeve thing. You could pull it out. You look at it's like a sleeve. It's like a cylinder. So it's just a metal pole. It's two metal poles. It's two metal things. It doesn't need to be plugged into anything. No, no. I could see how so. But I understand that there is a, that it's what, you know, like confirmation bias, like all of those things. You go into a scenario expecting something to happen. It's a little bit easier for it to happen. And something like the ideometer effect might explain some paranormal communications. But I still feel like it's very, and I'm, of course, we have our ardent 
skeptics that think that anything that's wooey is stupid, which you're allowed to live that life. But I know what I saw. Why are they even listening to the show it's if they believe they, that? It's both. It's all. Everybody's interested. That's the interested. weird part to me. It's like, well, that's what we talk about. Well, they like to listen to get angry. Oh, okay. Too, yeah, which I do understand. But I, like, this is the type of thing where I was in the room. It was weird in there. But I do understand that it's about, it's a consciousness thing. Mm-hmm. I still believe it's a consciousness thing. I don't think that we necessarily spoke to an entity in that room that was outside of that room. What The way I look at it is I don't feel like ghosts can answer questions because they don't have brains. That's why they use our brains to answer the questions. Oh, wow. I love this. Yeah, dude. Get high, dog. Fuck yeah, man. I'm, I got to wait till after the last stream. Don't fucking me, dude. I got to fucking wait, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got one last little letter. Now. It's been a while since we've had poo poo news. Yeah, we have to feel like we could talk about it. I feel like we can have one little break. We'll it's like it's time for us now. I feel I mean, like there has to be some for us. We love poo poo. I just, I'm, it just comes up a lot. I'm a big poo poo boy. I mean, I, and they really like it hits with the nephews. Oh, well, you actually, before the poo poo story, this actually really, the, I mean, maybe I should wait till Marcus to talk about the crucifixion update. Is that there was a crucifixion that happened in Ireland mm-hmm. where a guy was basically fucking with a, uh, neighborhood crew and they nailed him to a fence crucifixion style and apparently that was uh, very often done Did during you? the troubles that was was considered a paramilitary style attack paramilitaries dole these attacks out for everything from repeat criminality to dealing on the wrong patch to owing the wrong person money these paramilitaries are a leftover stain from the troubles are now a little more than they're a little more than gangsters where is uh, this this is in Ireland this happened to a they're guy straight up crucifying people in Ireland they've been doing it apparently that's a thing that they used to do the, the man that was crucified last week was repeatedly warned by the local boys about stealing a warning he did not heed so they burned out his van and nailed his hands over his head onto someone's garden fence now apparently oh, that's not like a real that's not a cross crucifixion that's a, no it's just to a fence but still the act of nailing someone to something is called a crucifixion interesting see yes. i thought you had to be on a cross i don't think so i believe that a crucifix is just the fun way to do it Okay. You know what I mean? It's the artistic way. All right. So if like so if, if it was like a uh You could nail anybody to any plank of wood. Any plank of wood? What about like stucco or uh Oh yeah. I mean I don't know if it'll rock. hold. You have to put one of those little anchors in there. Yeah, yeah, you definitely got it. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah do that. It. Uh but yeah, apparently they're one the more so I guess the more common way that the paramilitaries uh fuck somebody up is that they shoot you in the back of the knees and it's called kneecapping. Damn. It's not good. You don't want to be in any disagreements with those guys. But also, uh, it's an extremely complicated topic that we don't know a heck of a lot about. I take back my Idaho comments. <laughs> <laughs> and here we're in last little, here's the poo-poo story. Thank you. I need some dookie in my life. He's a, he's a shout out to my family in Wichita, Kansas. Please don't let this happen to me. I live in Wichita, and there's a nice little restaurant near where I work in town. My coworker and I, we eat there regularly. Today we went in, we had our food, and we were about to leave when I had to go and take a shit. Told my co-worker I would meet him back at the shop because it might be a minute. We laughed. He left. I entered the bathroom. There are two stalls and a urinal in this bathroom. One stall was occupied, so I took the other one. It was mid-shit when an envelope was dropped onto the ground in the stall next to me. I said, hey man, you dropped something. They then kicked it into my stall and said, open it. I hesitated, and I said, do you need help or something? They said, yeah. So I opened the envelope. Inside was a $100 bill and a note that said, please do not judge me. I have a problem. Please do not flush. You can keep the money if you don't flush. I have a second envelope with $200 for you if you leave your socks in the bowl. I laughed, and I said, are you for real, man? He then held another envelope down under the stall to where I could see it. I got back to the shop. And the first thing my coworker asked me is if the restaurant was out of toilet paper, to which I said something like that, and I held up 300 bucks. He didn't believe me, but I know you guys would appreciate the experience. So I don't know. I doubt. I mean, it's a very silly email. I'd love to see the proof. Yeah. Not the poop. But if 
If it is true, because were you here? Were we talking about that? That the so guy hard to be gay in Wichita. It's intense. If you're spending three hundred bucks to like, there's a there are LGBT like like worlds and stuff, and all, all there's always pockets that you can kind of go to in really intense cities and stuff like that. Like you know, like OKC even has a really like thriving LGBT community, uh, but it's all like you know, even though it's a very very conservative town. But the, my thing is that we've had the, there was the Calgary shit eater that we covered a while ago, where it's that this does happen well i don't think he's, he's i mean who knows what he's doing with it with socks and the socks are in the toilet i think also? he's honestly truly my imagining you can't see it it's been him just going la, 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 putting la, his hands la, in the bowl la, 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 taking sock put on his head la, 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 jerking off a little bit and then yeah la, 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 la. that is an expensive activity i mean hey you know get your 300 dollars worth i know if we spent more to go see neil young <laughs> Which is almost the same thing. <laughs> yeah, the West Edmonton Mall poop eater. We've been dealing with these. So these guys, so these guys are out there, and uh, and then we dealt with the whole saga of talking to various OnlyFans I got producers. Shit in my bowl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we talked to various OnlyFans producers that talked about selling their poo poo and how lucrative it is, and you know, and I'm, sometimes I wonder, am I in the wrong business? I mean, I'm pooping three times a day. Oh, if I could sell my, if I could move my poop to on, in a way mm -hmm. that wouldn't just sicken people, then I just feel like, I mean, if I'm selling my shit, if you're buying my shit, like you do have a problem. Like moving I think that if you what moving movements, yeah, that's my my new business. Yeah, that's, that's a good it. name for a shit selling bitches Be business. Is it weird though? Because in one way, it's like I do understand if it's from a hot girl's butt. Like if it's from a hot girl's but I don't want. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm into it. Yeah. I'm just saying. I like, mean, I would if I have to play with shit. I'd prefer it to be from a hot girl's butt. But why is that? Why is because it is still shit. Well, a big fat sweaty man. I mean, my shit. I mean, it's Philly cheesesteaks. Oh yeah, you know, like that's, oh, no. at least that's like roughage. Yesterday, like, I yeah, thought yeah, a weird. hamburger. I tried to cover a hamburger with vegetarian sushi. Yeah. I think my shit was like this morning. You covered a hamburger with vegetarian sushi? Yeah, I ate vegetarian sushi then for dinner. To be like, roar, boo, oh, but you had the hamburger for lunch. Roar, boo, lunch, vegetarian fries. Roar, chow, house, vegetarian sushi on top. Real time, make a go. One really healthy. Breakfast doesn't count. Breakfast should usually be healthy anyway. But one healthy meal a day, I think, is a good way to go. That's all I do. Yeah. That's but, all then, I but the problem is that when you eat one big fat meal, yeah. Right, and then as a fat man, when you look at a fucking vegetarian menu, and you're like, I can go shit hell on this. Yeah, I can eat whatever I want. Mm -hmm. It's got calories and stuff. I ate too much Chinese food last night. It did not go well. Yeah, what are I you can tell. Do? Nothing, except not change. Gonna, yeah, I don't think I can. Oh, change my clothes. Well, not my lifestyle. <laughs> you gotta live every day knowing for a fact that changing is for losers. Hell yeah! Right, man. love the Fuck. fact that I stay exactly the same. Learn no lessons, tell no lies. These fucking pussies. Yeah, man. dude, I don't need to learn. I don't need to grow. I don't need to get healthier. All I need to do is laugh because yeah. laughter is the best medicine, especially if you don't have insurance because it's the only medicine you'll have. But then you find out a lot of times, it was like we were saying on stage the other day, which I do believe. Which hey, nice shout out to everyone who came out to Side Stories. Oh, Sold so much. out show at the Masonic. So much fun. I can't wait. Hopefully we get to perform there again sometime it soon. It looks like I we love are. That place. We might be, but we can't announce it yet. But, nice. we'll, but we'll figure that out. Uh, and then it's nice about laughing because laughter is the best medicine. But what I also thought was really nice is that when you were talking about when you went to and took Rambo to the dog ER, mm -hmm. I think it's so nice that they actually just have humans in there like doing medicine instead of bringing in like the patch adams guys oh yeah i hate don't make me laugh if i have cancer also i mean i don't think dogs would get it <laughs> like, <laughs> do dogs laugh side I stories so. on P.O.T.L. I think they do though. people say they don't but i think they do i think that they do oh my god shout out to blue at the dog that died he's behind there. me yeah, he's there. Out, so, but when i went to when rambo was in the emergency room he said i don't even want you to look up rob can dogs laugh i want them to email me side stories help p.o.t.l at gmail i know that dogs laugh for a fact i've seen i've told jokes to rambo and he laughs that's i mean i do believe that is a confirmation bias <laughs> but you're allowed to have it patreon.com so slash slash podcast i like up. pushed tootsie off a chair once and he looked at me and he like smiled and i was like he was like that was funny. you like that yeah, yeah i know yeah, you yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Rambo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go to patreon.com slash last podcast on the left if you want to see our bodies. Yeah. Go to TikTok at LP on the left to help China gain mastery over this country. Go to twitch.tv slash LP and TV to see all of yeah. our incredible streams, incredible work. 
Good Pud is coming back. Hell Just yeah. you know, we have our podcast. Has been, we've been recording it. That's going to come out very soon. Are You're you going to release that. it weekly, or are you going to put it all at once? Or you'll see. Okay. That's a good question. <laughs> very good question. Then we go to last podcast on the left.com to see us on tour. We are going to Denver this week. We are sold out. We cannot fucking wait to I see you. I think there's like eight tickets left. Yes, we can't wait. It's been so long. I can't wait. I love see Denver. It. We have it's we're gonna have a blast. One of my favorite. We're places. coming to Seattle. We're coming to Brooklyn. We're coming to go to last podcast on the DC in July. Please That's come and see us. That's gonna be fun. And Australia, I promise you. We are putting oh, this together. Is happening. It is happening. And I we got are, the itinerary. I sent it's it. Done. I got a new passport. We are going. Plane tickets are purchased. There's going to be a visa. Like, yeah, we, it's going to happen. We cannot wait. The actual, like, I owe you a live stream. It is happening. We are working on it. It's going to happen right before we leave. I promise you, you mm-hmm. fucks. I promise you. We're working on it now. We're just trying to get all of your information bundled in a way that isn't too evil. Like yeah. what Morgan Freeman did in the first Batman film. But then Batman knew how important it was to not allow such a nefarious tool like Morgan Freeman had built. Are you going to make me fact. quit off of my scruples? Is that what's that? Am I Morgan Freeman in this conversation? I don't know. Because that would make you Batman. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then Marcus is Alfred. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, Mark, you're Robin. I'm Robin. I like being Robin. I'll be Robin. But I'm the, I'm no acrobat. I'll tell you that much. No, no, no. More like a fat acrobat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey! Thank you, guys. Come on, fuckers. All right. We'll oh, see you next week. Yeah. EddieTools.com. Yeah. Go buy his fucking jokes. Yeah. Thank you so much for everyone who watched my movie this week. That was very sweet of you guys. Yes. All right. Love you all. How America Kill My Mother on Amazon. Enjoy it. Go watch it. Get sad. Hell Satan. Hell my mom. This show is made possible by listeners like you. Thanks to our ad sponsors. You can support our shows by supporting them. For more shows like the one you just listened to, go to lastpodcastnetwork.com.